Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about what it takes to become an esthetician as far as schooling and the kind of person you need to be, your personality. Also, I'm going to be talking about my experiences in the field and also I'm going to be talking about what it takes to make money as an esthetician and if this is something that you should be interested in if this career is the right one for you. Now in this video I'm actually answering to a subscriber that was interested in knowing uh, knowing more about aesthetics and I am so happy to make this video but you know what I'm also going to be shouting out one two three four five youtubers who have participated in my small YouTuber tag video, which I will link above. If you're a small YouTuber and you wanna join in, what we're doing is if you support my channel and you comment on my videos and I see you act actively being involved, I'm gonna shout you out. I'm gonna shout your channel out. And then what you can do is you can return the favor by shouting me out and making a small YouTuber tag video where you ask questions. I mean, you answer questions. Um, and so if you're interested, I'm gonna be linking that above. So what you wanna do is stay till the end. I'm gonna be shouting these YouTubers out. I'm also gonna be linking their channels below in the description. But if you wanna know what it takes to become an esthetician, keep watching. Hi you guys, I'm Moonlight Mason and in this video we're going to be talking about becoming an esthetician. How did I become an esthetician? What did I have to go through? What do you have to go through to become an esthetician and will you be successful? What do you need to do to be su successful and how much money will you actually make? So. Before I get started, I just want to say, please do subscribe to my channel. And also, if you are a smaller YouTuber, go ahead and start commenting, leaving comments on my video and videos. And um, I will shout you out. I'm going to continue shouting people out, okay? Because that's how we can all support each other. And support each other means that we watch each other's videos and keep the conversation going. Okay, so let's get into becoming an esthetician. So I live in the state of California. In the state of California, you are required 600 hours, <laughs> 600 hours of uh, going to uh, esthetician school and also passing the state board. So let's talk a little bit about going to esthetician school. How much is it? And uh, how do you do your 600 hours? You can do 600 hours uh, either part-time or full-time. I actually went full-time. So I believe it was like three months, Monday through Friday, like, you know, like a, like a eight to five or something like that. Um, I was actually retrained as an esthetician under workers' comp. And so that was like a different situation where I didn't have to pay for it. But I do remember that if I had to pay for it, it was about $5,000 and that's going to a private school. Now, you can also go to your community college and you can get, become uh, ready to take your state board test by going to a community college and it's a lot less expensive. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between going to a community college and a private school. All I have to say about that is that when I went, I went to a private school and um, my one of, I had two instructors. Usually you have two instructor, instructors. You have the instructor that does theory and you have the instructor that does practical. So, um, my, I think it was my practical instructor, uh, she was also teaching at the community college. That says 
that it really doesn't matter if you go to a private school or you go to a community college and you know why? All they're teaching you is the rules and regulations of your state in sanitation procedures, um, your client protection, uh, so that you don't pass on diseases, um, and just certain different rules that don't really teach you very much about actually practicing aesthetics. So yes, you do have practical when you go to school where you actually work on each other and you learn how to do waxing and you learn how to do facials, but it's very, when you're in esthetician school and you're learning how to do a facial, it's um, very minimal. I mean, they're teaching you the basics and that's all you're gonna get is just the basics. So you're not gonna be an esthetician that really knows her craft until after you've invested time in doing many, many facials. And I recommend that when you graduate, you go and you work for different spots because every place you work has their own protocols and you have to follow their protocols. And so what I did is I went and worked at uh, two or three different spas and then I took what I liked from the one, what I liked, I took what I liked and I let go of what I didn't like. And so that's what I recommend that you do if you actually are gonna become independent, get your own place and work for yourself, which by the way, is, you'll make more money. You'll make a lot more money if you rent out a place and work for yourself, but you don't wanna do that right when you graduate because first of all, I'm telling you, when you graduate from esthetician school and you've passed your state board, you do not know what you're doing. The only way that you're gonna become proficient and an expert on aesthetics is through practicing and seeing different skin types. And that is limited in esthetician school. You're not gonna see that many different skin types. Also, um, in, in esthetician school, the products that you use, they give you such a little tiny amount it's not like you get a bottle of cleanser and you can pour the amount that you want. You get these trays with little tiny, you know, um, uh, you know, little tiny like place, I don't know what to call them, little tiny um, cavities where you can put in a little bit of cleanser and usually the instructor goes around, okay, cleanser time, and then goes around and gives everyone a tiny bit of exfoliator, a tiny bit of mask. It's not enough to really get your hands in there and really learn how to work with the products. Now the products you learn by going to, and, and, and going to uh, more education. So if there's a product line that you are interested in, they have you, they have representatives that come out and actually do training. So you, or you actually go to training sessions with different products. If you purchase, this is, it, there's so much I have to say. Let's say for instance, um, there's a line called Eminence Organic, which is a really popular line. I use that line. I've been using that line since, you know, since I started. But I believe, and I might be wrong, okay? Because it might be more but I just want you to consider if you're independent working for yourself and you want to carry that line, you need to purchase an opening order, which is like two, $3,000. And who can really do that when you do, haven't built up a clientele? You're new. And that is the reason why you want to actually work for someone else. A couple of things that I would like to mention about attending esthetician school. For some reason or another, they all seem to have the same vibe, which is the equipment is broken down, everything is old and shabby, things are not organized, and you'll hear this again and again 
regardless of whether you're going to a private school or you're going to the community college. I'm not sure why this is, but this is the way it is. It's just disorganized and you do get frustrated when you go to school. Their only goal, there is only one goal that um, when you go to esthetician school, there's only one goal that they have there and that is to have you pass the state board. That is very important because you are not gonna really learn how to become an esthetician going to aesthetics and learning esthetician school. You're not gonna learn that. You are going to learn that by practicing aesthetics, working at different spas, which by the way, you're not gonna make that much money. Now, if you go on Google and you can say, what is an esthetician's salary? You're gonna see that the salary is something like $28,000. And that is true because what happens is you're gonna work for minimum wage or you might have some sort of other agreement where like it's a 60-30 split. So the spa gets 60%, the esthetician gets 30 plus her tips. Not only that, you have to follow their protocol and say um, a client is paying like a going rate for a facial, for like, you know, they'll say a facial is like 50 minutes and it's like in $150. You're on the clock. You have to finish in 50 minutes. Your performance is judged on how you stick to the clock. So you have to finish in 50 minutes and that really does not give you enough time to properly do a facial. So when you go to a spa, and I know many of you have, and you get a facial, you'll notice that they're not really doing that many extractions. It's not like they're really getting to know your skin. Most spas are destination spas, which means when people travel, they want to go and get a facial. It's more of a relaxing, soothing, massage, lots of, you know, just creamy, um, you know, the warm steam, and everything is for relaxation. In my business, what, what I'm able to do is my facials are an hour and a half. And I have my way of doing facials. So I've also trained other estheticians when they get out of a school and they are licensed. I do provide internships for estheticians. And basically what they do is they come into my spa. I'm a one person operation and they are able to learn not only how I do things, which is, which is you know a development that I have created over all these years, but they also learn marketing, accounting, all of these business hats that you have to wear as an independent esthetician working on your own that they don't teach you in school. When you go to school, they're not gonna teach you how to do uh, accounting. <laughs> they're not gonna teach you how to advertise. They're not gonna teach you uh, salon software. You're not gonna know all that. So that is the reason why I highly recommend that once you get your aesthetics uh, license in whatever state you're in, that you go and work for other people. And you're gonna make minimum wage, you're not gonna make that much money, and they're gonna have you do other things that are not even related to being an esthetician. And sometimes you're doing these other things which are like cleaning equipment, going around cleaning the equipment, or stocking the, the um, towels, or doing the laundry. There are so many things that I do as a single esthetician. And when you work for a spa, remember that they have their ways of doing things. Okay, so there's that. 
The other um, aspect of becoming an esthetician, which is really, really interesting, is that if you want to make money, now I'm talking about $60,000 and higher, okay? Um, there's, there's, well, $60,000 you can do on your own as an independent. You can make $100,000 as an independent esthetician. I want you to think about uh, the area that you're in and the competition. I'm an esthetician. My facials are an hour and a half. They're $90. But here's the thing. When someone comes to me, right, and they want a facial, they'll say, oh, you know, can you um, wax my eyebrows? Can you wax my upper lip? Can you wax my face? Can you tint my eyebrows? And all of this adds to the final bill. Tinting eyebrows is $25. You know, upper lip is 10. You know, eyebrows are 20. You know, and uh, for $90, I also give you a peel, um, a chemical peel, a pumpkin peel, an alpha peel, a beta peel, a glycolic peel. I don't have any machines. I've never, the only machines I have is the, um, the lamp, the, the magnifying lamp. You need that. So you really need two machines to be an esthetician on your own. You don't need to worry about any of this if you work for, for a spa. But if you're gonna be your own independent esthetician, I've been doing it all these years with two machines. Actually, well, two or three. Uh, one is a steamer, but I also do cool steam, which for a lot of different facial conditions, my clients are so happy that I offer cool steam because you can't find that out there. You cannot find estheticians that offer cool steam or even understand that you can put on a pumpkin peel. Okay, once you've done a client, you know her skin, you know how it's gonna act. You can start layering peels and you can buff it and keep it on longer by using cool steam and then that really, really makes your results really good so that they want to come back to you again and again. I'm, you know, when I was in esthetician school, I remember uh, one of the instructors was, was trying to teach, you know, professionalism. And I remember her saying, you know, you don't want to go into the room, you know, with a bottle of water and, you know, take a sip of water and say, you know what, yeah, yeah, and you're talking to the client. It depends on your rapport with your client. If you've been doing it for 20 years, like I have, I go into my, in my treatment room with my Starbucks, with my juice, with my water. You know, you can make your own world in aesthetics once you learn how and what you are actually doing. And there is only one way to do that, and that is to go work at different spas and to take continuous training and get certified in continuous training, which by the way, one of, another way to really make money as an esthetician is to become a massage therapist. The two really go hand in hand. Now, I do um, body wraps, back facials, and I work on your face. I am not a massage therapist. But what happens is <clears throat> I have several clients that come to me and say, I want my back done and I want my face done and I want my legs waxed. This is how you make money. You stack the services. You need to let your clients know what you do. If you are a massage therapist. If I was a massage therapist, which I'm not, I would make a lot more money because there are a lot of people, if you're a good masseuse, they'll come to you for a massage, right? And then they also want a facial at the same time. And you can charge an extra $10 to do their feet. You do exfoliation, you do massage, warm towels. There are so many ways that you can make money as an esthetician, but the, if you want to make the best way, the best way to make the big money as an esthetician, I'm going to tell you right now, 
is that you go and you become a nurse. Once you become a nurse, a registered nurse, you can become a medical esthetician. Now, medical estheticians work for plastic surgeons and they can do Botox, all kinds of fillers, lip injections, and all of this is really hot right now. Medical estheticians can also use certain machines that um, estheticians can't. So what happens is you're paid a much higher rate for working for a plastic surgeon, supporting the plastic surgeon, and becoming a medical esthetician. So that is something that I, I mean, if you're just starting, I really highly, highly encourage you to become a massage therapist as well, and also to continue your studies, become a registered nurse, and keep taking it to a higher level. The higher your education, if you're a medical esthetician, the higher your education, the more money you'll make. Which brings me to this great story that I have to tell you about Hawaii. Um, I was gonna tell you about the state board, but I've gotta tell you this story right now. Uh, in Hawaii, I was looking uh, you know, for a job as an esthetician, and I really wanted to work for Kaiser, the hospital. And when I found an opening for an esthetician in Kaiser in Hawaii, I was beyond thrilled. But guess what they were looking for? They were looking for a licensed esthetician in Hawaii, that's me, who is also licensed in tattooing, so you have to be a tattoo artist, who is also specialized in nipple reconstruction. Now, <laughs> that is not unusual to find these types of combinations where I was like, good luck with that. Good luck finding a licensed esthetician who is a tattoo artist and specializes in nipple reconstruction. And sometimes when you look at job descriptions as estheticians, which I often do, they want you to do the duties that they put there have nothing to do with being an esthetician. It has a lot to do. They want you to market yourself. They want you to go around and build brochures, um, give classes, do all these things that does not have to lift the 75 pounds, push and pull, you should see the job descriptions for esthetician. They want you to do, be proficient in Brazilian waxing. That's another tip I've got for you. You need to know how to do Brazilian waxing. There, I don't. I don't do Brazilian waxing. That is not something I've ever wanted to do. I don't feel, I would not feel comfortable doing a Brazilian wax. That's me. But I'm telling you, there are many estheticians out there who can do a great Brazilian in 15 minutes and there's 60 bucks. There is $60 in, in 15 minutes. Someone who's really good at it, okay? So I refer people. You wanna do a Brazilian? I don't do it. Also the back end. Ha! Huh. There are many um, higher education classes that teaches you how to wax your the butthole, okay? How to bleach back there, okay? This is really a high demand service, especially in the gay communities. For men and women, they, they want different shapes when they have bikini waxes. And the more specialized you are, and, and a lot of these job descriptions, they tell you right up front, we want someone who feels comfortable doing Brazilian waxing. Thank God I work for myself and I have my own practice because that is not something that I'm interested in. I am not interested in waxing anyone's butthole or bleaching your butthole. I am an esthetician, so I work on your face, your decollete. This is what I do. Um, so it's funny how 
it the the uh, aesthetics has changed over the years and I see a lot more changes because a lot of estheticians also have these really fancy machines such as um, you know remove a mold you know little little uh, tags that you get some women get tags skin tags on their skin and if you have a machine that removes the skin tag 50 bucks but here's the thing how much does the machine cost if you go into your own uh, private practice how long will it take you to make a profit the machines are 40 50 150 thousand dollars the machines the bed the table your linens all of this costs money and that is the reason why i highly recommend that you work for different spas until you know that this is something that you want to continue doing it's just like being a youtuber you know you don't want to go and buy a fancy camera when i'm doing this on my cell phone you don't want to go and buy lighting and, and put all this money until you know this is something that I love doing and that I want to do, which by the way, being an esthetician is the only thing that I have ever done as far as a career for so long. I mean, I've done a lot of things. <laughs> I've had a lot of different jobs, but being an esthetician is something that I really love doing. I love that that I'm in peace and serene and quiet in that room and that I have the music going and that I have that it smells great and that I've built this environment of just of being able to be present and being there for the client. And many times, especially when you have clients that are there for anti-aging, okay? See, when you do a facial for anti-aging and then you have a client who's there for their acne, these are two completely different facials. When you do a client for acne, which by the way, in the state of California, it's illegal to use a lancet. A lancet is a needle. So if someone comes to you and they have a little white head and you need to pop it and get that out, that's illegal. So you cannot do that if you're working at a spa. There is no spa that is going to allow you to use a lancet, but you can find a private esthetician who is well versed in using lancets and many of them do. I want to talk a little bit about the state board in Hawaii. Um, there is a standard textbook for aesthetics by my lady and um, it's a standard textbook and it has a workbook. But the state of Hawaii said, you know, we might use this new textbook with this new workbook. And so I had to purchase the newest uh, My Lady textbook, the, the guide that goes with it, and this other, you know, uh, textbook and the guide that went with that. And then I found contradictions. Textbook A said something completely different than textbook B. And so then I would call the state board and I said, which is the answer? Which is the right answer that you want? Because I'm studying these two books that you told me to get, which were very expensive, okay? And um, I, I, there's, there's different answers. And they could not give me the answer. I passed on my first try. I believe you had to have 75 or higher. And I had something like 77% that I passed. These are, I can think of two, but maybe I'll think of more. Two of the questions that I missed, just to give you an idea of what this is like, two of the questions that I missed in my state board in Hawaii. Question number one was, you know your menu? Where do you put it? Do you put it on the front door, facing out? Do you put it on the window, facing out? Do you put it on the desk when the client walks in? Where do you put the menu? I missed that question. Why? Because when I read that, I didn't think that was important to know as an esthetician. There are so many things. You need to memorize 
all the muscles and the bones and your veins. You need to have the different layers of your skin memorized. You need to know how to identify different, uh, you know, blemishes. When you need to know when to refer the client to a dermatologist. You need to know these different skin conditions, what's appropriate for someone who has cuparose, what products are appropriate for someone who's going through cancer or someone who's pregnant. <laughs> okay, so there's all of these things. And the second question I missed is what is the proper temperature of water, the, the, the hot water? What is the temperature? The, on, on the on the washer on the wash machine I don't know so I missed that and I went back and reread it and sure enough it's there so there it, it the tests are meant for some reason or another they're not meant the whole state board both in in Sacramento California and in Hawaii the they're, the tests are not meant for your benefit they're not meant to help you. There are trick questions there. Okay, so when I went for my state board in Hawaii, I was like, you know what? I, I, do I wear my contacts? Because if I wear my contacts, I can't really read small print, or should I just not wear my contacts and wear my glasses? So I decided to not wear my contacts and wear my glasses. And when I got there, on one eight by 11 page on your test, there were four questions. The questions were really, really big. There were a lot of misspelled words. The questions were really silly. And the whole thing was just like a comedy show starting from some of the people that went there to take the test that did not speak English, that didn't read the directions, the instructions, the instructions we got to where to show up for this test. By the way, if you're like five minutes late, you gotta reschedule it. And, and you've got to travel far. Like in California, there's only one place to take the state board, and that is in Sacramento, the state capital. You have to travel there, okay, to take the state board. So, so um, getting back to Hawaii, the instructions of where to even show up on where the test was being held was incorrect. On the paper, it was incorrect. So what I did was what I, usually do is if I have an appointment somewhere where I've never been before, I'm going to go the day before. I want to know where to park, how to get there, um, you know, how many elevators do I have to take. I want to know exactly how to be where I have to be at a certain time so that I cannot meet any obstacles that'll keep me from being there. So what happens is I go the day before to see where that location was and it was like, you know, 15 miles away okay and so then i called and they said oh no you know that's just a mistake on the paperwork the the um the actual testing site is at this hotel so then when you when i when i went to the hotel i find out where to park i find out the procedure of going to the restroom because you have to go somewhere and get a key and the restroom is out by the pool Seriously, because this is like in some hotel in Maui where I went to take my test. Um, so you really, really, and, and just in life in general, if you have like an important interview or if you have something that you have to be at at a certain time, I always go and make time the day before or, you know, just, just two days ahead of time, whenever you can, get there ahead of time, be prepared and go. I absolutely love being an esthetician. I think that I'm going to be an esthetician when I'm like 90 years old. I have clients that have been with me from the very beginning. Let's talk about marketing. <laughs> I want to talk about marketing a little bit because that's really changed. When I started as an esthetician, um, I did these coupons. Uh, it was called, um, oh my God, not Groupon, not True Bates, but it was, it was before Groupon. But it was kind of like Groupon, but the only difference is that there were, and it was free. I didn't have to pay anything at all to do this. And this is how I started. And this is how I got the majority of my clients. I hired this company who had sales reps who went on the streets and sold them 
uh, like like an offer, like a like a coupon offer. There were three different offers, all with me. And then what would happen is the client would pay the company like. I don't remember, like say it's $30 or $35 and they would get like these three visits with me, right? And then each visit had an upgrade. So when the client would call me to schedule an appointment, I would say, okay, this is exactly what you're getting. Would you like to upgrade? And then, you know, it's an extra $15 to upgrade and it was for each of the three visits and then the client would tip me and many of them have stayed with me for 20 years. And many of them, I mean, I can even get client testimonials. My clients are, some of them, some of them are like in their 70s. And because they've been coming to me for 20 years, getting facials every three weeks they come in, you know, it's like almost like once a month for them, but every three weeks, uh, well, once a month, once a month they come in, they get a facial, they get a peel. I know them so well. They're my friends, they know my life, they know me, I know them, and you should see their skin. They get compliments on their skin all the time. Here's the difference about advertising now on Groupon or Truebates or any of these social media sites where you get a discount. What's happening now is people, all they want is to jump around to the least expensive place. So if someone wants a facial once a month, they're more apt to go to, they're more apt to go to these different places every month, whoever is offering a deal and less likely to become loyal, less likely to stick to one person, which doesn't really do much for your skin because every time, that's like going to a doc, to a new doctor for the same problem every single month, instead of being with someone who's gonna monitor your progress. Which brings me to another thing, is being an esthetician is definitely the consultation. I'm still doing the same consult that I did when I first started. I ask questions such as, are you on birth control pills? Um, do you, you know, tan very quickly? How much water are you drinking? Are you on caffeine? Do you drink alcohol? I go through so many questions that people are looking at me saying, what does this have to do with getting a facial? Well, you're not coming here, or, I mean, unless you are, I mean, do you want to just come here just for, you know, just some, you know, being relaxed and having just a soothing facial, I still need to know if you're allergic to seafood. I need to know if you're allergic to algae. I need to know what your allergies are because a lot of products have these ingredients in them, especially today, that clients can be allergic to and what you put topically does get into your system. So when you're doing a facial for acne, it's more you're, you're just trying to really help this client in the long run and it has a lot to do about diet and a lot to do both, both for, for anti-aging and acne. You're coming to me once a month. What you do twice a day at home has a lot to do with how your skin is gonna, you know, how the, the health of your skin has a lot to do with what you're doing. So, wow, you guys, I don't know, I can talk some more and some more, but those are, I think, I don't know, I think I said a lot about my experiences as an esthetician. Um, I love being an esthetician. I want you to comment below if you have any questions about, uh, being in the field of aesthetics and let me know if you would like for me to mention you in my next video has a shout out which we're gonna do right now because this video has gone on long enough right okay the first person I'm gonna shout out is Rach113 it's R-A-C-H 113 she has been very active on my channel. She is actually the one who asked me to do this video, which I do listen to you guys. So if you guys say, hey, can you do a video? You know, one, one um, subscriber asked me to do a video. She said, I'm like, I live really far away in another country and I wanna see what you see. 
I want to see what's in your neighborhood. So I made a video for her, um, you know, on my what I see, and, and that's on my channel. But um, Rach113 wanted me to do this video on what it is to become an esthetician and my experience of becoming an esthetician. Um, another one that has been very uh, supporting my channel is Living Life Beautifully. So I, again, I'm gonna link all of these below. And thank you, Living Life Beautifully, for being interactive and commenting on my videos. Rosalita Campbell, hello, Rosalita, I appreciate you. Man, Rosalita is great. She really is actively involved watching my videos. And all of these YouTubers have great videos that I want you to go on their channel and check them out. They are part of this small YouTuber tag. They are, that's why I'm shouting them out. So if you want someone to shout you out, go to these YouTubers and support them. I've got two more. Mr. T Gaming, Mr. T Gaming does of course gaming videos and he has also been supporting my channel. Please check him out. And um, in Dahlia's, I N D A H L Y in Dahlia's Tube. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, that is another YouTuber that I am shouting out. I'm very happy to do this for you. I look forward to having you shouting me out, and I will be uh, leaving messages for all of you guys that I shout you out in this video. If you want to shout out for me, this is what you got to do. You got to subscribe, you got to be active, watch my videos, comment on my videos, and tell me that you want me to shout you out. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.